<laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the other side of the coin and welcome back to That's Life podcast. We are back, of course. We did promise you guys that we'd look back the comments of the previous That's Life podcast show and then go through some of those comments. However, matters are different at the moment. We'll park yeah, yeah, that. Yeah. We'll, we'll come back to that. Things yeah. are a bit different. We need to concentrate on the latest situation, which is... The ownership is in a bit of a chaos. It's a mess. Iqbali versus Todd Bowley. This is real. It's real. This is no fake information that's getting circulated around. This isn't some sort of a flavor of the international break. No, no, no. This is a legitimate thing. I've got my boy Ryan in the building. Ryan, first of all, how are you doing? Not good, bro. Not Whoa. good. Whoa. <laughs> Not good because I, this morning while I was doing my chores, I was listening to you and Ishan, and mm. you always have this nickname for Ishan, the bad boy Ishan Badra. I was like, where <laughs> yeah. the hell is my nickname? Why don't I have a nickname? Why? I don't know. Maybe something goes with bad, like, because his last name is Badra, <laughs> just a bad boy Badra, like it's triple V. I need to find uh, something with Ryan. I don't know what I can rhyme with Ryan. Uh, Gonis, Gonis, last name Gon. We have a Gon there. What about, you know? what about Romeo Ryan? Romeo, why? Because uh, I was injured, <laughs> never coming up in the show, missing for a whole season. <laughs> Only doing one third of the season. <laughs> yeah, you hey, know, that's so funny. That's actually true. Just randomly, just Ryan will be back next week, then he's back six months after. <laughs> Ryan is fully committed to this, and then we don't yeah. see Ryan for six months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I do come back like Romeo laughed there with a hell of a 90 minutes. Hell of a then. That's right, gone. baby. Gone. That's right. Maybe we'll yeah. park the Romeo for the time and we'll think about a better name. But, Ryan, let's get cracking yeah. into this, man. You would have seen the news that's been circulating for the past two to three days. Um, and it seems like it, this isn't a shock for us. I, I'm pretty sure you're aware, probably four or five months ago, it was first reported that the relationship between Todd Bowley and Iqbali isn't the isn't uh, not strongest, yeah. but it, it, it's it's just not it's not I together. Like, I like rumors that like Todd Bowley was gonna sell and stuff. Do you remember? Like it was small little rumors that yeah. he was kind of like gonna sell, and he didn't want to be the face of Chelsea anymore, and this and that. Yeah. So now that you've seen the recent news, I just want to gauge your initial thoughts around this kerfuffle this chaos that's taken place before we move into a different direction on this yes, yes. whole conversation but i want to hear how's your initial thoughts around this mess as i'll tell you about that kerfuffle as you as you <laughs> rightly stated um Mez, i saw i was having a peaceful international break say so, okay mm. sign out with uh, i got locked out and then um <laughs> then i've never got to sign in back but um, yeah, when I saw the news, I was really shocked. Uh, initial reaction was like, okay, it's international break. Maybe it's just, you know, one of those rumors, right? And I saw mm -hmm. you say it was Bloomberg or something, like this huge weird um, <laughs> source. It wasn't like the usual. But it's not, it's not around the corner, some guy making news. Like, it's Bloomberg and Financial Times as well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it, it was weird. It was a weird one. But I think... Um, Rightly, you said this in your video that things like this only leak when someone within it wants it to leak. Yeah. Either Todd Bowley or like Bali wants it to, to leak. Mm -hmm. And um, I think a lot of people have emotions with this. I think as some Chelsea fans, even though they stay to be angry, mm -hmm. there's a little bit of excitement when a little bit of drama like this happens in the videos mm -hmm. and this and that. But I think I excite if this were to happen to Roman and Roman was having like issues with his right hand man or woman, right? Hmm. I think we would have been distraught because oh, yeah. we love Roman and we love yeah. how it's run mostly. Yeah. But the little tinge of excitement, I believe, is because fans have a little hope that maybe that this ownership could change or something huge could That's change. Such a good point, man. Such a good point. And yeah. I think that. For me, my initial emotion was that hope, but mm. my other emotion is just embarrassment <laughs> and disappointment. And yeah. it's just um, uh, like 
we already don't have the best reputation under this ownership. Yeah. I think it's just gone to all time low now. That mm. all this time everybody's commenting on our videos saying we're too negative, trust the process when the highest people in this bureaucracy or this structure don't even trust the process. So yeah. that was my initial reactions there. What about you? Nah, man, well put, man. Some really, really important points that you've laid out. I'm I'm of the similar vein to you as well that I think the excitement that is seeping into everyone's, um, you know, belief in this whole situation is that hopefully we will become far more competitive. But the reality kicks in, as you said, that how embarrassing is this, man? Like. Yep. Three, this is the third season of the new ownership coming together. We don't really have anything substantial okay. to show for it. And yeah. on top of that, on the third season, where we're meant to be consolidating everything and trying to now act yeah. in a proper manner. And now you're telling me you guys can't even get along? Like, and then CEO left this and that. It, well, the, the CEO situation, I think the guy was well known to Clear Lake right, Iqbali, because he comes from that private equity, that, that Chris Jurassic guy who recently parted ways is, I think, part of Clear Lake Capital's setup over there. So I don't know whether he was always meant to be there uh, in a longer run, but whatever the case was, he didn't do much when he was at Chelsea anyway. He called people customers, fans customers. He called the game product Um so there was a mess. There was a mess, right? Clear Lake Capital, Ryan, they, they don't have a sporting background. They come from an absolute thoroughbred business background, right? So yeah. obviously these people that they've got in, when they come into football, they talk in a business jargon, which yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not adequate. Anyway, right. Look, my sentiments are similar to yours. As I said, I want to take this conversation. I don't want to talk about Bowley versus Iqbali. I know that's going to come up in our conversations anyway. The thing that yeah. I really want to talk to you about, and I want to get the live chat thinking differently about this, is will this impact our season? Will this impact the new manager? Will this impact the players? doesn't matter if there is a fight upstairs between the ownership um, should the players just go out there and do their thing? Because a lot of fans are saying, Miz, look, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because at the end of the day, the players, they've been tasked to do a business. Not they got to go out there and do a business similar with the manager. Is, is, is this say you think Miz, about the situation? I think this 110% affects the players hmm. and the manager. Listen, Anybody who says that probably don't have a job, never really worked in a place before, mm. probably still in high school or college, something mm. like that. Yeah. Yeah. If you're working in a place and the owners of your business, and keep in mind the success of your business depends on the owners. It's not like a, a well-orchestrated organization where the wheels will always turn no matter who the owners is. Mm. I think football is a kind of sport is where the owners directly impact the success of the club, as with some businesses and jobs in life where the owners of the business directly impact the success of the business, mm. right? Mm. Uh, I think that if the owners have in a civil war, in quotation marks, a public yeah. one of yeah. this and that, in an already vulnerable team, a vulnerable manager. Think about it. This isn't a title winning team with experience and leaders. This is a mm -hmm. team with young players, a young manager in a kind of structure where it's vulnerable, it's volatile. Miss it will 100% affect the players, not mm -hmm. only in their performances, but their commitment to Chelsea. For already from a sporting point of view, a lot of them probably wondering, uh, is this the place where I'm going to improve in? I mm. think we talked about in our last podcast that yeah. why would young players come here? 
that they, they are sure the statistics show other than co which is the outlier in this graph statistics yeah. show that they're going to come here and the career is going to go downward trajectory and we're already seeing that with a lot yeah. of our players kaisido enzo and, and kunku yeah these guys right yeah so already it's volatile and vulnerable now forget our players coming in i'm thinking of our players who are already here they are probably talking to the agent over dinner on Skype saying nobody even uses Skype anymore, but on like FaceTime. <laughs> but they but they're doing it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what age I'm from, right? <laughs> but on, on well, FaceTime. literally no one uses Skype. Bro. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but that's how bad the Chelsea situation is. They had to go and download Skype and then <laughs> talk to the agent. And like a show conversations is like sometimes when things like this happen mm. and their value and stock is still up. A player like Enzo could still go to Real Madrid. A player yeah. like Caicedo could still make it to Barcelona somewhere. A player yeah. like or Bayern Munich. These players would have, if not one foot out the door, they would have their hand on the doorknob. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And I think when that hand on the doorknob start happening subconsciously, it will start mm. affecting the training, the performances, this and that. Um, mm. The reaction to losing 1-0, our reaction to team scoring against us, mm. it is bound to have a domino effect. Event At first, it might be small, but eventually it's going to be bigger and bigger and bigger. And this is a disaster. Look, uh, once again, I have to agree with you because, as you said, people that actually work in an organization, people that have been under management or an ownership they'll know when there is a change not, not even change when there is a chaos when there is unsettled situation in an ownership of an organization all of that trickles down and the uncertainty seeps throughout the organization and and it creates a bad vibe people say i want to talk to you about this right right people say and he's been brought into the football club. You get paid. Go out there, do your thing. People yeah. don't understand the human sense. Human, like, yeah. I get paid well, like thanks to God, by my company. But if I hear today that my company is having some sort of ownership issue upstairs, yeah, bro, I'm worried in the sense what my future is yeah. going to look like, and I'm worried in the sense that. Like, where's this company going do you know what i mean like I, I, exactly. I, the productivity that i'm giving right now it might diminish a little bit because i'm uncertain in my mind mentally i'm not i'm not stable because exactly. where i'm working it's mentally not... unstable exactly so how can we sit here and go our coming up fixture against bournemouth that these players that the the manager and all the other personnel that are involved, surely they're seeing all of this online, right? Right? Like they, they're yeah. very much aware of this situation. How can we sit here and go, oh, it's business as usual for them. Go out there, do your training and prepare for Bournemouth. Surely somewhere in the back of their mind, they're a little bit unstable. Well, these players can't, you know, you're not career, right? Miss, and you're doing your job, hmm. you know, as humans, you would like to feel that that stability where you could say, you know what, let me set my goals for January. Let me set how much goals I want to score in time for June, how much assists I want to have, how much appearances, mm -hmm. this and that. Telling you, those basic set of goals, these players can't set. These players don't have the stability to think, I'm going to, other than the new ones who came in this summer, mm -hmm. nobody here knows they'll be here in January. They don't know if they'll be here come June. Yeah. They can't safely say that they're settled here. And they mm -hmm. know which manager they're going to play on the, in January, mm -hmm. which manager they're going to play on the, in June. They don't even know, and this is how bad it is, they don't even know which owner they're going to play on the, in January. Or That's June. pretty mad. That's pretty Just, mad. I'm telling you, Miz, it's going to seep in into the little things. Mm -hmm. And I think you're gonna, this is how Bournemouth are going to feel, right? We're going to do the right things the first 15 minutes. Mm, and then mm, mm. that if that one corner comes, 
and Bournemouth hits the crossbar, we're going to start to lose a little bit of confidence. And then a little mm. small thing is going to hit our confidence. And that little extra you need to give to bounce back in matches, it's not going to be there because those extra comes from the stability and the security. It's yeah. kind of like a platform. You need to have a secure platform before you launch off of it, right? Mm-hmm. And take a leap. I think that these players don't have that. And it's, it's concerning. I think... This is a disaster. I mean, I didn't know this could be... I didn't know leaving this podcast last time. That, could, <laughs> that we could be... I know you bust an F, F-bomb here, but I know our parents, like, watch the whole, the whole show, right? But yeah. Like, this is a disaster, bro. But uh, oh. we, we've gone from a, such a scintillating second half against Wolves um, to a not-so-great final result against Palace, but we still felt that, do you know what, it's not, it's not all bad. It's, it's, going, to be, it's going to be okay. To the point where it's, I think the true, the, the reality is, this is bad. And, um, and, and you know what the crazy part is, Ryan? This is not getting solved tomorrow. This is not getting solved the mm-hmm. day after tomorrow, because we're talking about billions of money here, right? We're talking about potentially Igbali taking over from Bowley, which is Bowley's 13, 14%. Bowley's not just simply going to bend over backwards and go, yeah, just give me whatever, man. Just give me your chump change from your pocket and I'll be on. My... No, that 13, 14% is worth a lot of money. He's going to be sitting there and going, let's re- reevaluate the club. This is what I outlaid. I believe the club is worth this much and 13, 14% of that is this much. Iqbali might turn around and say, well, I don't accept that. I don't accept that valuation. So there could be a tussle there. I don't think it's a straight, okay, Bowley, ask your figure and we'll just pay you out. It could be an ego thing. Like, I'm not going to let go of this. This is my thing. Because when you see, for years back, you didn't hear Iqbali in interviews talking about how he wanted to own an English team. Mm -hmm. It was Bowley years ago. 2019, called Bowley. Yeah, and I think this, like... I know fans have a little tinge of excitement for drama. It's kind of like that weird feeling where people have a tinge of excitement when they hear a hurricane on the news or some shit, or like <laughs> earthquake or something. But when in reality, it's like a horrible situation. Horrible situation. And yeah. I don't know why people have this excitement for. Maybe because it's so horrible. Mm. And I think that it isn't seeping into fans just yeah. how destructive this could be to not only our season, but our future. Let me tell you, Miz, with these players' foot's going to be on, their feet going to be out the door, and players not going to want to come in, this manager, already in a volatile position with his experience and and the uncertainty of just being a Chelsea manager in general, Mm -hmm. I think it could be that Chelsea could probably be in a position where if we always come on this podcast saying if things don't change, if things don't change. But mm. I think this is like literally rock bottom. Like how would things change here? How, this is going to be a long drawn out thing. And you know what the sad thing is? You said, right, that somebody within those two leaked that they wanted to come out. And it yeah. shows that they just don't care about the football. They don't, they don't. care about the players. They yeah. don't care about the manager. They don't care about the results. They don't care about the fans. So they true. They so don't true. care. They care about their ego. They care about winning the battle between the egos. And mm. you say it's Tata versus this. Let me tell you, that kitchen has so much chefs in it that we don't even see, that we don't even know who has millions and billions of dollars. Yeah. This business is such a ruthless thing. And when it has so much chefs in the kitchen there's so much factors that we as fans would never even think about mm. i thought this is serious and it's just so unbelievable to know that the club that i love is mm. in this position no, it, you it, know, it's, it's gone past embarrassment that you know arsenal fans should be embarrassed about bad transfer windows and man new fans mm. but this is more this is past bad transfer windows this is Literally down to people just don't give a damn about the fans or about Chelsea. So true, bro. Like when you actually paint the picture that way, that the fact that 
they've leaked the information not only means that they want the fans to know about this and and maybe they want to gauge where the fans are going in terms of which way they want to go is it Bali is it Bali whatever the case but I think the more important point what you just said is that these owners don't give a damn like you, you should you should have just kept it in and you could have yeah. just decided internally you've let it out almost to kind of say who's got the bigger yeah thing. you know what I mean like <laughs> you don't you don't seem to care like it's about ego for you like mm -hmm. and that really puts everything into perspective that unfortunately i think i think i think both are just as bad as as, as each other even though like yeah. i'm leaning towards bowly but it's an ego thing isn't it at the end of the day it's an ego thing yeah it is because I think before we hope and like a, a far outlier to happen with Maresca and this and that, like an mm. Arsenal situation. But honestly, I just think we win the mod, bro. I just mm. think that nothing is going to change unless this ownership completely changes. Nothing yeah. will ever change until this. And if that's eight years from now, or seven years from now, oh yo, nothing is gonna happen until this. Whichever one wins, I still think it's gonna be, it's gonna be horrible. Mm. You, you don't think if if one buys out the other, I think the most plausible way to look at things. The more I think about it, is if Bowley does this, it probably will create a lot of reshuffle again. But if Iqbali, who's already under full control, if he was to take over, you don't feel that. This guy is already on the move. He's already done what he's doing. And he's setting up a structure. Whether we like it or not, is it good for the future or not? You know, the whole age policy and the wage capping and this, that, the other. Do you not feel that just let Iqbali run with it because he's got majority shareholdership at the moment? Bowley doesn't have the majority he brings in. He comes in, let's say he buys out Iqbali, but he may not like what's going on right now and he'll try and reshuffle things and that could set us back even more. I, I don't know. Like, It's a mess. It's, it, it's what you said. It's a mess. But what's the best way to tackle this mess, basically, for the time being? The best way... To tackle this mess, because I think that both of these guys, it's like picking your poison, mm. and because the, the type of philosophy both of these guys have, is just not our our, our sporting philosophy, mm. and far less for sporting philosophy, it's not even a a human being philosophy. Yeah, you don't that's the sad part. They don't yeah. treat their coaches, their staff. They don't treat the their players. The players. How much people was working around Cobham and stuff got fired or let go and this and that? Gone. Or, or we were, everyone under Roman gone. Miss, if the pandemic happened under these owners, what would have happened to Chelsea? Because look how much Roman did during that pandemic to try to conserve the no, life. No one got furloughed, you know. No one lost no. their wages during that time frame. No. Let me tell These you, guys probably we, would have sacked everyone. Yeah. Um, I tell you, this is not, forget sport, and it's not even human being. And mm. I think the way they treat players, the way they treat fans, the way they treat uh, the coaches, managers, I think it leaves a, it, it, it's not classy. I'll mm. never work in football. I'm tell you, I love Chelsea. I'll support them, but I just Biden time here until they're not in ownership anymore. Because I don't think we'll ever be where we were before. We under Roman, we're thinking how to become a Real Madrid and a Bayern Munich and a Barcelona. Now we're trying to be. We now we're trying to say how do we become Brighton? A, yeah. How can we be Brighton like no, but, uh, a far no. greater scale? Well, but we fall so badly now. We're thinking, 
how do we become a fourth place team again? Yeah, yeah. Before we're trying to become a first place team, I think it's unbelievable that we would used to be on this podcast here with the tactic mm. of all being excited about Champions League semi-final, Timo running in behind, two Kobe, <laughs> the 3-4-3, the, three, three. Yeah. The, the wide overload, the middle three, two or six dropping into number 10, Timo in behind. Yeah. They got clean up in the back. Bro, we had Good such moments. happy times just yeah. a few years ago. I can't tear on and through the middle like a crazy man. Mm. We won the Champions League. We, people cried on, on the streams. Yeah. The club that they love since they're small and like, think about that. I'll honestly say I don't see us being there under this ownership. Whether it takes five years, ten years, fifteen years, twenty years, I don't see us ever get. It just won't there. happen. Like, like you honestly feel it just won't happen. No, because it's okay if you don't have a sporting philosophy, mm. right? We could. They, it has some hope that somewhere down the line they could say that you know we're going to get the right football people in charge. We're going to say that we own up to our mistakes. We're going to get mm. the right manager. Start from the scratch. Yeah. Okay. But when you treat human beings the way you treat human beings, and like if there's nothing and nobody, and fans, I just mm. think that's something that never fixes and never changes. It's just in tune to who you are. Unfortunately, it is at this club. It's, 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 it's sad, man. It really is sad. Just when we all thought, like finally our third season let's see it's been abysmal the first two new manager philosophy under the new manager and 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 here we are like again another and this isn't even like a small thing this is this is identity of Chelsea football club like this is ownership from the top where the issue is at Ryan, as Enzo Maresca like I've been very impressed with him since he's taken over, the way he talks in uh, press conferences, the way he's been dealing with things. Even he must be sort of thinking, wow, what is this, man? Like, I knew Chelsea was a chaos. We've chopped and changed so many managers already under the new ownership. But now uh, the owners are in disagreement between them two, I mean, how do you like? What if Bowley turns around now and goes like, because apparently you need sign offs from all owners. Uh, ultimately, I guess Bali holds the power, no problems, but Bowley still signs things off. I'm sure they have a hierarchical structure as to when things are happening, who signs off, and whatnot. What if Bowley just all of a sudden takes a stance that I'm signing nothing anymore? Like, I feel sorry for Enzo Maresca, man, like as a manager yeah, coming bro. into this situation. Yeah, I mean, honestly, as I don't even know, I don't know who is going to want to come in this job. I know it shows. I said this, we said this three months ago, six months ago, one year ago. Right? Mm. Who is going to want to come? And it shows in the, in the people coming in. Potter, yeah. then Poch, then Maresca. It's going to go lower. And lower and lower, and lower. Yeah. just now you might be managing Chelsea. I'll be your 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 side manager for the tactic board. And we're gonna have our meetings here on this podcast. That's my <laughs> podcast. We're the only person who say yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you might even leave your job <laughs> to go to Chelsea. It's mad how top managers are just not. They're not attracted to this place. No, bro. They're not. It makes me sad watching those football kits behind you, bro. I mm. People don't understand how sad this shit is. And people just think it's drama and post on tweets and talk about how bad Chelsea is. But people honestly love this club. It used to be a source of inspiration, motivation, and happiness for people. Mm, mm. And now it doesn't just seek elsewhere. Like you come to watch Chelsea play, you feel depressed. Bro. It's not even Chelsea play anymore. You just come to see the state of the club. Watch anything on the news with Chelsea is just so negative. It's like yeah. literally, it's not even how bad we are on the pitch. 
how bad we are on the press, how bad it is to see players like Chaloba, who love our club, just yeah. isolated like this. It has players who won Champions League without us just disposed. I mm. doing nothing. No class, nothing. No thank you. No send off. Do you know what? Let's talk a little bit about this because I had a few people say these sort of things about other clubs in the live stream yesterday with Ishan. They were like, um, is don't act like this. Th these things don't happen on other clubs. Like, you know, Arteta was ruthless with XYZ players. Um, so and so were ruthless with XYZ players from their club. And I'm like, yeah, but look at th those clubs have some level of stability. They don't go out there and just willy nilly just kick players out and bring in a plethora of players. Dude, we we've our seen from last season. The, you see what I mean? Like we we literally bought in a lot of players last summer and sold a lot of players last summer, which was off the back of doing a lot of business in the first summer when the owners took in, uh, came in, and a lot of our players that were part of a successful Champions League squad they left. Again this summer, whole bunch of new players come in, whole bunch of players have left. This is not the same as Arteta trying to build Arsenal or any other trying to be trying to trying to be ruthless in their football club. Like and we shouldn't talk about Arteta because this man win nothing. Like Arteta isn't like the pep or this and that. I think and the thing is with Chelsea, it's like okay, so when Pep this like disband somebody, right? Hmm. They end up going to an amazing club that, in a kind of way, is a good step off from City. Hmm. The thing about Chelsea is like we just banish players. We don't give a shit about their future. We just say, yeah. yo, find something before the window dance, find a solution. It's like we ruin. It, it's that kind of thing. Is like if you're going to sell players, right? At least have them on the bench a little bit. Get hmm. them at 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes. To sell them, to show what they could do in preseason, this and that, before they go off. I remember for Chelsea, uh, back in the day, like Torres and stuff, we, Mourinho knew he was going to sell Torres. He mm. still got game to his last appearance, so AC Milan could see him and mm -hmm. take him away from us. There's many players who still played on the bench a little bit because they were good personalities. And we showed them that we, we appreciated their service, that they won a yeah. Champions League for us. We appreciated them. I think it's one thing to be ruthless and next thing to be heartless, like Juan Mata. Yeah. He wasn't training alone yeah. after winning a Champions League for us and winning mm. titles for us. He was still on the bench. He still played at least a 10 minutes in the Carabao Cup. Mm. Mm. Even David Luiz, these guys who were exited from our club and People could say other clubs are, are, are ruthless and this and that, but why do we want to be like that? Yeah, why do we want clubs. to be like that? It yeah, it's not clubs. a good thing. I think I think that's a good point. Like, yeah. it's not a good thing to be. Yeah. Like, let's not be proud yeah. of, oh, we're so ruthless, we're so proud. Like, it's not good to do yeah. that. It's, it, treat, your, treat your players with respect yeah. and honor them for the service that they've done for us. Do you know what? Just to interject, I was watching Rio Ferdinand's, to all the people that are watching this, I was watching Rio Ferdinand's um, show a couple of videos ago uh, when he was talking about the Raheem Sterling situation. Obviously, Rio is probably friends with Raheem Sterling, so he's got a close tie uh, when talking about Raheem. But the underlining message was very important. Forget about the fact that he's friends with him. Let's forget that for a second and understand the underline. What Rio Ferdinand was saying that, because that whole show was about predominantly about Chelsea, right? And I think Jody Morris was there and um, Jolien Lesko was in that show. The underlining message, what they were trying to say was that it's not very attractive what Chelsea is doing, like the way they're dealing with players. Exactly. Chopping and changing, not even letting them know about the plan, like, at least have the courtesy from the get-go and letting them know. Like, I don't know what conversations took place with Ben Chilwell from the start of this season, before the preseason. 
Ben Chilwell literally got a contract extension a little over maybe 15, 16 months ago. Right? Maybe maybe the start of Pochettino um, season. Ben Chilwell got a contract extension just post-Potter <clears throat> era. So we're not talking about that long ago. Ben Chilwell still has three years left. After this season, he'll have two years left in his contract. What message is Ben Chilwell getting here? You give me a contract extension and then new manager comes in and now I'm not even to be seen in the in the squad. Now, I'm not advocating for Ben Chilwell. Like, people will listen to this and go, oh, Miz wants Ben Chilwell. No, that's not what I'm saying. Ben Chilwell doesn't fit. But the underlining message is how are we dealing with all of these things? How are we dealing with Ch Chalobah thing? How are we dealing with, you know, Conor Gallagher situation? How are we dealing with, as I said, Ben Chilwell, Raheem Sterling? And the list goes on. Angelo Gabriel, who literally came 12 months ago. It's a, it's a respect thing. It kind of shows, yeah, like the manager comes in and he said, you know what, these players are a bunch of nobodies. I don't respect them. And the fans don't hold these players with love in their heart. So the fans mm -hmm. wouldn't give a shit what I do with these players. Because let me tell you, if it had Marcelo and Real Madrid and he won Champions League for them, and you just came in and you said, but Marcelo, go and train other. Find, find a solution. <laughs> Yo, nobody in their right mind, especially a manager who's 41 years old or something, yeah. would, would do that. You know? Because there's a respect there. The fans mm. hold this player. The titles show this player and then the medals show it. This and that. They want things for the club. When you come in here, you know, it, it bothers me how they did things with Chilwell and Kovacic mm. and these mm. guys. Because Chilwell won a Champions League for us. Mm. Kovacic won a Champions League for us. It has certain guys that I don't like how they did things with. Yeah. You know? And it's like, it's not, it's okay if there's not part of the plans. But don't come in like these guys are nobodies. Mm. So now the people in the club will be like, I could win whatever with Chelsea, the highest trophy ever with Chelsea. They still would not give a shit about me if yeah, I get injured. They won't treat me well. Yeah. If I get injured at this club, I might as well go to a dungeon or something. Because mm. they would not take care of me. They would dispose of me. They have no loyalty here. Look in Barcelona. I know their financial situation is crazy. Mm. Right? But it has some players, man, they get injured like Gavi. And mm. um, Bernal is the next one towards yeah. ACL, this and that. Yeah. They have reassurances, man. That you know what? We're going to give you a contract extension. Even though you did the ACL, we have faith in you. And mm. you're going to come back here. And you're our boy. You know what I mean? You're our academy boy. And nobody is just going to come here and say, we don't want you because we've been working with you since you're 12 years old. Mm. And we believe in you. And I think... At Chelsea, it's crazy that they could come and do Chaloba and Ivan. It, it was embarrassing how they handled things with Gallagher, too. Yeah. Let's have him up and down in Spain and England and this and that. It's like they really treat people like nobodies. Mm. They mm. really, really treat Ian people. Ian Martin's like another one, right? Ian Martin, like Champions League finalist. You know, we, we were at one point looking at left back options as well. Um and yeah, he's he wasn't even looked at. Do you know what I mean? That whole potch era was so confusing. And the and the crazy part was it was all under Igbali, Igbali's guidance anyway. Like and then he and then they chopped him as well. Like they chopped Potch. Now that you've brought in Maresca, no problems. Now what? Like now, is there? And this is how I want to end this, right? Now with this ownership, what is our remit, right? What is Maresca's remit under this new ownership? Is there accountability if achievements aren't achieved? Basically, if 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 targets aren't achieved, like. Is there any accountability in this football club? Like, but what targets? 
what is because, the target? What is the target? Enzo already said we don't win trophies here. Not even what trophies. We don't even win games. Yeah. What target is he setting, setting for yourself? There's no targets here. There's nothing. There's no standard. There's no targets. There's no this is Chelsea. I remember Eden Hazard used to come on interviews and we used to play the best teams. It used to be like, we could win because we are Chelsea. Hmm. That was the standard people used to have going in. We are Chelsea. We could beat anybody. Now it's, we are Chelsea. It's a possibility we could lose this game, but it's not normal. Hmm. I, f- I feel like it's crazy. You know, when I change that ownership, half of me could think that things are going to be tough. But like, I feel like every wrong thing that could happen, happen. Happened. Yeah. Yeah. It was a disaster. And and do you know what the crazy thing is, Ryan? Like, I look back at when these owners took over. They didn't need to do much, you know. They really they did didn't not. need to. They did not. Oh, my like, God. The, the, the crazy thing is the transformation that they did is so Yo. absurd. Like, they needed to come into the party and go, okay, We've got Rudiger, we've got Christensen, we've got a few players that are going to be going out on free. Let's sort this out first because we don't want them to go out on free. We need to have a solid defence. They've been doing fine. We've got a genuinely a top, top manager in the likes of Thomas Tuchel who has seen quite a lot of success at Chelsea Football Club. Should have had a lot more silverware if it wasn't for certain individuals not being able to put away the goals. Should have had a, <clears throat> at least a couple of domestic cups as well under his belt. Okay, let's <clears throat> let's keep that brother. Let's keep a few players. Let's keep Thomas Tuchel. Let's talk to Thomas Tuchel and weed out who are not needed in the team anymore, who are not part of the plans for the timing or who are not feeling uh, right at the football club, i.e. at that moment, Ziyech, Lukaku, XYZ, right? And let's focus on where Chelsea is at, which was... A given top four team, consistently doing well at that time in the Champions League, just won the Champions League, and then the following season almost defeated Real Madrid, who ended up going and winning the whole thing anyway. And let's give a couple of players, quality players, and slowly we'll work out the financial fair play things, wage structure, who needs to leave and whatnot. They came in like a thunderstorm. And just said goodbye, bring a whole heap of people that didn't work out, say goodbye to them as well, for a whole heap of people, they're not working out. And I'm like, dude, the establishment wasn't that bad. It was not. Okay, we weren't not. competing in the Premier League, but it wasn't that. It, it's not. It's not how it is now. I tell you, I tell you. The 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 whole matter, in fact, is that these ownership never wanted to give responsibility to anybody else, or power to anybody mm. else. They didn't want a true sporting director. They didn't want a true manager. That's so true, bro. That's so true. They don't want. It's ego. It all comes down to ego, yeah. no? It had one or two sporting directors available at that time that mm. was available. Guy from Liverpool, guy from Atletico, this one, that mm. one. Experienced people within football. The guy from, I think he had one from Monaco. I yeah, Paul Mitchell, I think. Yeah, yeah it, it had experience there. Well, no. they did bring in Christopher Vivelle, who was experienced. <laughs> and let's get yeah. out of this football club. We don't do experience. Exactly. No, no manager, too. I think it was it's just unbelievable. As you said, they had they didn't have much to do, man. Or they could have even wait a little bit. They you know Marina and Czech said they would have stayed for six months. Yeah. Wait, learn the football, get interview some people, have them watch the current team you have. Because obviously you're coming from America, you're not gonna know who is Christensen, who is Rudiger. You're not gonna know these guys. Yeah. But say have faith that wait. We won Champions League last year. We were champions of the world. We have one of the best managers. At least do your homework a bit of what you're spending billions of dollars on. Yeah. Right? And then say, yeah. okay, we're gonna wait. 
have a good transition, work with the past owners. Why is it that ego thing that they didn't want to work with a transition? It it's such a they wanted to run away so much and had such a big ego that they didn't want anything from the past ownership. Think about it. They didn't That's... want any player from that past ownership. Yeah. Any not even player, any like personnel that were involved as well. Like they I think they reached out to people to stay, but I think people just didn't like the way they were running the show. One of the biggest reasons why Thomas Tuchel didn't get along, and it's been reported by Atheri, is the fact that Iqbali, who is now completely running the show, right? He's so micromanagement style. Like, he wants a report almost daily basis. What is the squad up to? What, what are they doing? What's the manager doing? How's the training? Like, you got to let the football club just breathe and, and allow it to run the show. You don't need to be micromanaging at, and I feel like this micromanaging style is, is driven from the business world. Like this is you. how it's run at a, at a, at a private equity firm. And tell you something. Mourinho left and he came back for a reason. He could say whatever about the role man and they were never friends on this and that, but he respected the ownership. Mm. Let me tell you, players left and they came back to Chelsea because they felt respect. Their family mm. felt... It's a kind of thing where you move to a cl club and country with your wife, your small little kid. Chelsea mm. used to go the above and beyond to help them with housing, to help them with settling, to make mm. sure their family felt safe and good and settled that these players actually wanted to come back, the David Luiz and this and that, mm. came back to the club after a while, right? Mm. Let me tell you, there's no player within the past two years who left Chelsea and would regret it, or any manager who left it and regret it. They would actually leave Chelsea and thank God that they left Chelsea. Whereas before, under Roman, there were so much players that loved the club and so much managers that loved the club. Look, Sari. Sari mm -hmm. openly came out and said in an interview that if it's one he regret he has, he's leaving yeah. Chelsea. Because yeah. Marina, he said that Marina treat them good, that they didn't want them to leave, that they gave him everything he needed, that mm -hmm. they understood the situation. I think that top-class managers respected Chelsea. And they yeah. would always come back. That's why you would still see Ancelotti in the stadium coming back mm -hmm. to watch Chelsea play. You mm -hmm. think any, you think Potter or Pochettino has come back to the stadium to watch <laughs> Chelsea play? <laughs> no. Never. Let me tell you, when last you saw a legend in Chelsea watching in the stadium? I think Eden Hazard, but he came in because there was some promotional oh God, stuff. I had some burgers, fries, <laughs> beers. No, but when last, I remember that when we used to watch on the room and every week we would see a legend yeah. come and watch yeah. the game and this and that. It seems like even our legends want nothing to do with our club. And well, when one of our legends actually speaks out, he gets bashed instead. That, that's the thing. Legends these days seem to be talking against. Do you know what I mean? They don't really... Yeah. Like, for really Mikel, care. I don't know what why people hate on Mikel for. Maybe the, maybe the truth is ugly. That's the issue, isn't it? it just because he's spitting facts and truth, yeah, we don't want to hear it. We don't want to hear it. And, and then... Look, let, let's wrap this up. This is what it comes down to, doesn't it, Ryan? That all those people that only want to be positive. I'm pretty sure at the end, by the end of this podcast, a lot of people coming. Oh, here we go again. People talking negative, but don't blame us. Yeah, Stop blame blaming us. the people. Stop blaming Ryan or blaming me or any other Chelsea fans out there. We're not the ones who are creating the news over there. Our owners can't get along, mate. Like, don't come at us. Like, don't bring your energy that we are just being negative for the sake of being negative. No. It's shocking. It's abysmal situation. The fact that on the third season where we're meant to be solidifying our position and trying to compete at the highest level, we are still talking about how can we make it back into top four. And on top of that, Owners can't even get along with each other. Or mm -mm. well, owners can't even be positive. <laughs> tell them to be positive. Yeah. Tell them and to tell trust us. the process. 
Yeah, tell them they 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 can't trust the process. Todd Bolly, imagine telling Todd Bolly right now, trust the process. Todd Bolly, I don't trust the process. Too negative, Todd. (laughs) Todd Bolly doesn't trust the process. Yeah, bro. Miz, let me ask you before we close things up because we have a few minutes. Yeah, we still have a few more minutes, right? Yeah. Um, I genuinely want to know you as a fan Mm. how how you feel right now. Because I know that when you capture in the news and it's coming in thick and hot and the articles pop up, obviously you have some, you, you kind of get that adrenaline, right? Yeah. But when that yeah. adrenaline falls and yeah. it's actually deep the situation we're in, yeah. how, how do you feel? Sad. Sad. Um, <sighs> there's so much that that question is so loaded with emotion. Like it will bring me to tears. I'm not even going to lie to you. It will literally bring me to tears. People have seen me cry on this channel. Chelsea is not just yeah. like a club for me. Chelsea is literally after my family, well-being. Like Chelsea is the next big thing, man. L- I live and breathe it. Everyone in my family knows this. A lot of the people in the community know this. I don't do this. Yeah, sure. It gives me a bit of monetary value on the side now. No problem. So it's not a life changer for me. I still work full time. But the biggest pleasure I get out of it is watching the games together with all these fans, doing these discussions with all these fans. So when I see these news, it hurts. Yeah, when I see that my club is from what it was once upon a time to what it is now, it hurts. It saddens me. Yes. Do you know what I mean? So then I hear that the people that are that have been trusted to be the custodians of the football club don't even trust each other. What hope do I have as a fan? I'm telling you, Ms. All right. Forget results and like uh the football and philosophy, right? I'll close on this, right? Mm. And maybe this could change within the club. Maybe they're kind of out of, they're so ruthless within the business world that they translated mm. to human beings and not just businesses. Like in the stock market, you could manage businesses like yeah. ruthless like that. But yeah, yeah. on on the transfer market, you can't treat human beings with That's children and parents and wives and this and no. that, like, like that. No. But I mean, at the end of the day, if they change, I think this is something to, to think about, right? Atletico Madrid, right? Mm. And they used to be a lower club, right? And mm. I think I kind of understand where in um, hardcore Chelsea fans from the 90s, 80s and stuff who is, are from England are saying that they used to be a family club and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I think it's the love and warmth that players mm. were received with, and the managers, and the mm. community that each the fans shared with the players, and the players shared with fans, and why they love mm. people like Zola and these guys loved Chelsea so much. Yeah, right. And uh, I think, for example, Atletico Madrid, they were a lower team when Torres was captain, and stuff mm. like that, right? Mm. And but the amount of love that Torres and these players felt for their fans, for the club, for the people working at the club, for the people behind the scenes at the club, for mm. the children wearing the Atletico Madrid jerseys, their wives, the this and that. This was a team that was lower, but something within the club, how they treated people, how they treated the fans, how they treated the coach, the players, made them mm. want to wear that badge for the rest of their life made them want to tattoo that club on their skin yeah on their heart and that is what i finally think it means to be a family club mm. and forget about it yes we could have had hard times right mm. for example tukul said this we were under restrictions and he said once we have a car we'll go We'll go with people, we'll travel for these games. We have a car, we yeah. have some wheels, I'll drive the bus. Something yeah. he said. 
Yeah, and, uh, I think it's like if there's no plane, we'll bus it. If there's no bus, I'll get my seven seater out. We are, we yeah. will be there. We yeah. will be there. And is that kind of love and a warmth? And I think that even though we struggle with results, I think the, the owners are responsible for cultivating an environment where people feel like Chelsea is their home. And they mm-hmm. care about players, care about Chelsea so much, and the people are catering and the people are this and that so much that they say, I'm going to bleed for this club. I don't care if we're seventh. I don't, don't care about this, that Champions League. I'm going to bleed on that pitch because I want to make these people happy. Mm-hmm. I want to make these older people clean up after us and cooking for us and this and that happy that they celebrate with us that they go home with their family and they laugh and they watch games and they can mm-hmm. come out and enjoy the fans this and that when that is lost from our club man you could buy a billion dollars worth of players you'll never mm-hmm. ever have the heart of a football club because yeah. at the end of the day the heart of a football club, the heart of this sport, which is football, is not the four four two, the tactics, this, this and that, the overloads, the the passes, the breaking the lines. The heart of football is the heart of human beings, the emotion, yeah. the love, the the passion, the warmth. When you lose that in a club, you you, you lost everything. And I think that's what have. happened at Chelsea. And we have, and 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 it's and it's seeped into fans as well. Fans don't talk about the human side anymore. They feel like, well, you get paid by the football club, go and do your job. These players don't connect with the club. If you don't connect with your organization, with your employer, how can you perform? It's not a robot that's running into the field. It's a human being. Exactly. Sure, they're talented, but there's a mental side of this whole process. If they're not mentally feeling connected with the employer i'm sorry you can bring all the talent out in from the world you can bring all the talented managers of the world it will not happen it just won't happen Mm-mm. simple as that simple as that simple. um all right brother we're gonna wrap things up ladies and gentlemen let me know your thoughts let us know your thoughts about how you felt or the conversations that we had today it was a different spin in the sense that we didn't really talk about Iqbali or Bowley and what each of them can bring to us because everyone's talking about that. I think we need to talk about the broader spectrum of what it actually means for the club and how it can impact us. Um, positive, negative, I don't know. I don't know. Let us know in the comment section and we shall revisit uh, before the international break finishes to see... Um, where things are at, if we do have a chance to do another podcast before the international break. If not, it'll probably be post Bournemouth. But yeah, smash up the like button. If you're here for the first time, subscribe. Hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. And thank you, Ryan, once again for your time. I appreciate that. Of course. I shall see you soon. Very, very of course, soon. Of course. Take care, bro. Bye. Take care.